Ezra Pound's poem in a station of the metro. The apparition of these faces in the crowd, petals on a wet black bough. What can we make of this poem when we have a look at it? Well, first of all, it's very short. It's like a Japanese haiku, focused on a single moment of experience, followed by a single moment of reflection. This happens so quickly, it's almost instantaneous. The poet presents us with two images and no explanation. Second, the title itself almost forms an integral part of the poem and provides essential information. That is, you know, straight away, this is set in Paris. And if you want to know exactly which station of the metro it is, it's La Concorde, because Ezra Pound told us so in later comments about the poem. Third, it doesn't fit within any conventional metrical arrangement and it doesn't rhyme. Fourth, the two lines represent two different processes. The first line registers the initial impression the poet has of seeing the faces. The second shifts to his mental interpretation of that sight into metaphor. That is, the faces are petals. Note that he doesn't say like, he prefers metaphor to simile here. Fifth, that jump from literal to metaphorical also mirrors a jump from the urban man-made environment, that is the metro in the middle of the city, to the natural world of trees and leaves. And whereas we know exactly where the first line is located, we have no information about where the second image in that line comes from. It may be a specific memory of the poets, or it may be something he has imagined. Sixth, the faces are an apparition, that is, like ghosts. Is this important? Why didn't he just leave out the apparition bit and say, these faces? Well, it could be that he's playing around with the idea of the underground, the physical reality of the metro system and the underworld of classical mythology, the place where the dead go. Hence these faces going into, returning from, milling around within the underworld are apparitions, that is, ghosts. In addition, the faces are undistinguished from each other. They're in a crowd. Pound is being rather literary here because he clearly has in mind the description of dead souls in Dante's Inferno. You can follow this line up yourself. Pound's friend Elliot, of course, would use a similar image some years later in The Wasteland when he refers to the crowds crossing London Bridge. Seventh, Pound jumps from one metaphor to another in presenting these faces. One second they're apparitions, the next second, in his mind, they are petals. What difference does this make to us as readers? You can make up your own mind about that, but you may want to think about the idea of a person being transformed into a flower or a plant. It's something that happens frequently in classical mythology. What are the implications with regard to human life in relation to the rest of the natural world? Eight, those petals, what colour are they? We don't know because the poet hasn't told us. But we automatically assume they're either white or a pale colour, don't we? Because they're placed against the black of the bough. And it's the sharp contrast of something pale against a dark background that Pound is presenting to us. We also know that since the poet is talking about petals, the season in his mind is spring or summer. 
Now you have to ask yourself what this adds to the overall effect. Are the petals purely symbolic of renewed life against the backdrop of death, represented by the darkness of the underground and the blackness of the bough? Ninth, note the simple stark image there, wet, black, bough. Punchy one-syllable words which, even without the comma to emphasise the slight gap between wet and black, have to be given equal weight when spoken. Why is it significant that the bow is wet? Obviously it makes it more likely that the petals will stick. But is there something more to it? And black, is that because the bow is decayed and rotting, or is it just the result of being wet? And bow, wouldn't branch have worked just as well? You need to think about the sound of the words here, as well as their connotations, to get a fuller appreciation of what's happening. So, that's a start. What appeared to be a fairly straightforward poem without much significance to it, because of its brevity and simplicity, turns out to be richer and more complex when you pay attention to the words.